So uh, welcome to the next talk here. So, so uh, this is about secure multiparty computation. If you're familiar with this already, uh, I'm sorry, you'll, you'll learn nothing new. Uh, but but uh, I was told to sort of uh, start from the beginning and, and bring everybody up to speed on, on, on what this thing really is. So, so that, that's what we're, we're, we're trying to do. So um, basically, what is this? Well, it's a technology that can protect data not just while it's being stored or transmitted, that, that, that's what we're used to, right? I mean, we, we use an encryption to make sure that, that whenever we, we send something, when we store it in insecure media, it's encrypted. So if, if everything is fine, we can get it back. If that, that's good. But also, when we process data, we want to protect it. So what that means, actually, is that the people who are doing, who are doing the computation actually can't see the data they're computing on. That's going to be the goal here. Um, so if you haven't seen this before, there, there are, I guess, two obvious questions. One is, wait, that's, that's not even possible, is it? I mean, how would you do that, right? Uh, and secondly, maybe why would you do it? Is that good for anything? Is that just making extra trouble for us with, with no good reason? So I'm going to try to answer both questions. Um, and we'll be starting with why would we want to do it? Um, so, so the reason we want to do it is because, I mean, th this is not news. We all have private data, right? Um, sometimes when you talk to people, you have to convince people, even individuals have, you know, private data that, that they actually might want to protect. Sometimes people say, I have nothing to hide. But, but, I mean, that's not really true, is it? I mean, your health data, your browser history, financial data, I mean, you usually tell people who say, I have nothing to hide, well, look up in your browser, get, get your browser history from the last week, you want to post this on Facebook? Uh, well, maybe not, right? So, so. Uh, Companies have customer databases, they have information on salaries, intellectual property. So we all have stuff that, that you know, is, is critical. Once, for one thing, because it's useful, we need it. And for another thing, because it needs to be, to be, to be private to some extent, right? So, so that's why uh, we need to, if you look up the standard textbook in, in IT security, they, they'll tell you that, that uh, confidentiality, authenticity, availability is, is what you need to ensure. If you can do that, you're fine. And of course, that's true. But, but my point is there is much more. And the more here is that what we, what we can get out of combining private data from different sources, right? So it's not, not, not just about your own digital home that you must protect at all costs from, from the evil outside world. Sometimes you actually do want to combine data from different places. And this gets you interesting uh, added benefits. And I'll, I'll, that, that sounds maybe a bit uh, abstract, so I'll give you a few examples. Of, of places where, where, this, where this comes up. So uh, think of just your simple first price auction, right? You, you walk into an auction room, something is on sale, highest bidder wins. Um, so the thing is, uh, as you walk into the auction, you have some idea of what, what is the value to you of the thing that's on sale? How, how, how high am I gonna, gonna, gonna go uh, as the bid goes up? Um, of course, in the physical auction room, you might be carried a bit away with, with the, the the tension and uh, the bidding more than, than you really wanted to. But, but the point is, there is some maximum uh, value for you, at which point you, you will leave the bidding. Uh, and, but of course, everybody wants to pay as little as you can get away with, obviously. So, so that means that obviously, uh, if you want to find the winner and the price in a fair way, then of course, uh, the maximum bid, I'm getting ahead of myself, the maximum bid has to be private, right? Because if it was not, then other bidders might be able to press you up in price, just you know, keep bidding until just before your maximum is reached, and then they start bidding. So you end up paying always your maximum, whereas that wasn't really fair, right? That was not the way it was supposed to work. So um, uh, on the other hand, if we had all these private maximum bids available on the table, it would be very easy to find out who actually wins the auction and, and what this guy should be paying, right? Um, there's actually been histories of, of you know, online auction houses where they offer you to you know, keep you in the auction, bid for you, uh, and and uh, in, in some sense, that's, those, those people are not the right people to tell your maximum bid, right? Because they have an interest in keeping the price as high as possible because they get a cut of the, of the actual sales price. So, I mean, there, there's, there's a little bit of a, of a fishy feeling about this. So, but, 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 but that's one, that, that's one possible uh, scenario. Then we have an exchange. So let's say this, now you have many buyers, many sellers, you're selling some commodity, uh, oil or gold or, or stock or whatever. And, and, and the thing is, everybody, all the sellers are willing to sell different quantities depending on what the price is. Probably the, the, the greater the price is, the, the more you want to sell. Likewise for buyers, but they have the opposite uh, in, in, inclination, of course. Um, and, and of course, there's also private data here, right? Like the maximum price you want to buy at. 
Because if I just go out and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to pay $1,000 per ton, and that's the maximum. What are all the sellers going to say? They're going to say, what a coincidence. That's exactly the price. You know? <laughs> but that, that's not the way it's supposed to work, right? So, so again, uh, if you had... Um, so, so the goal is to, to find a fair market price, given the supply and the demand in the market. And if you actually had everybody's preferences on what they want to sell and buy at different prices, you could certainly compute something that the economists would call the market clearing price, uh, which, which would be you know, uh, the right answer to the question here in some sense. Uh, then we have something completely different again. Uh, so so uh, benchmarking. So you, you run a business in, 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 in some sector. You have all kinds of data describing how your business is running, like information on, on salaries, uh, production costs, uh, turnover, whatever. Um, and, and an interesting question is, is, is always, how do we compare to other businesses in the same line of business? Um, so how well are we doing? Given what other people can do, what should we be able to do? So that, that, that's a well-known question, and, and, and there are all kinds of economists like, like, like Court down there who know all, all kinds of, of fancy ways of, of ana analyzing such data to find out, given all the data out there, if we want to uh, improve our, pr our, our, our productivity, how far could we go in principle? So, so uh, that's fine, but of course we don't want to reveal information to the competitors, and that's the problem, right? Because the guys we're comparing ourselves to are exactly our competitors. So, so that's, that, that's a typical example of a service that everybody would like to have, but nobody wants to give you data away to it. Um, at least not without caution. So, so we, we could find the answers, sure, if we had all, all the data available. Um, okay, yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's what I wanted to say about that. Final example, database privacy. So lots of people know, know stuff about us. In the public sector, in Denmark at least, there are all kinds of different institutions that, that know things about us, tax authorities, health authorities, etc. cetera. Um, and if, in fact, all these databases were put together, you could do all sorts of interesting things, like do statistics to see what diseases are connected to what kind of lifestyles, all kinds of stuff, and maybe also uh, various administrative um, advantages you could get by, by you know, running everything together. But of course, this doesn't happen because, because at least in, in Europe, DGPR comes along and says you can't do this. It's just illegal. Um, so, so although there are things we could do if we had everything available, um, uh, usually we just can't. Um, okay. So I hope you'll agree, if you think about all these scenarios, that they're all similar, really. There's a whole bunch of different actors, players, that have private data. And for some reason, there is some function that we'd like to compute, some computation that if we put all the private data in, we get a result out that in some sense we all want. Like the, the result of the auction, the analysis result of the benchmarking analysis, etc. cetera. So, um, so, so we, we want that the result is correct, of course, but we also want that this intended result is the only new information that's released, right? We, we want to make sure that, that, that when we do this benchmarking analysis, this guy learns how he can improve given what anybody else can do, but of course he shouldn't learn the private data of the individual companies that went in, in, into this exercise. So, so can we do this? Well, and, and we also want this, even if some people try to cheat, of course. That's also an interesting question. What, 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 if, what if some people uh, try to learn more than they should? They shouldn't be able to, of course. Okay, so here's the solution. Find some trusted party. This is not a new idea. Find a trusted party. I mean, <laughs> this, this guy looks like he's, he's a trustworthy guy, right? So, like, we, so what do we do? Just send all the private data to this guy in encrypted form, of course. So he learns everything, uh, computes the result we want, sends the result out to people, and then promises to forget everything he has seen. <laughs> That's who work, right? Yeah, okay, I mean, of course, I mean, uh, sorry, Kurt, but, but of course that, that doesn't work. And there are many reasons why it doesn't work. Uh, so, so first of all, um, um, we've done doing this. We've done what every IT security textbook says you should not do. We collect all the critical data in one point, single point of attack. No, 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 don't do that, for one thing. The, the other thing, of course, is if the reason why we didn't just reveal the data is because we don't trust each other completely, then why should we believe that we can find a single party we all trust? 
That doesn't seem realistic, really. We, we could, of course, pay court an enormous amount of money to do this. So it wouldn't pay for him to sell the data to someone else. And that, that's, that's actually how it works sometimes. Uh, not with court, of course, but, but, uh, but uh, yeah. when you do benchmarking, that, that you bring in some consultancy house that you pay a huge fee. You know, and and the, the somewhat unkind interpretation of that is, is, a, is actually a kind of counter bribe that, that you know, they get money so they, they won't sell our data to someone else. Um, but but, but they, this is a really expensive uh, solution. If you could just have this, this thing run uh, you know, automatically um, in software on the blockchain, say, maybe there was a blockchain that could do this for us. Maybe there was, you know. Uh, this would be a much cheaper solution, right? So, um, so we want to do it for real. So here's a very simple example. Um, so let's say that we have some people in the same line of business. They would like to know the average of, of, of their salaries you know, to figure out, should I go to my boss and complain, or should I maybe keep a low profile? Because I'm, I'm, I'm making much more than the average, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, without leaking any single person's salary. So can, can you do this, right? So you can. It's pretty easy. First thing is, so let, let's say we have five people, just by example, A, B, C, D, and E, who have salaries, little A, B, C, D, and E, so, so numbers. And then uh, you can see, first of all, it's good enough just to compute the sum right, of the salaries, because uh, then we can just divide by five in this case and get, and get the average. Um, OK, so uh, first step. First person, A, with salary little a, he's going to choose five numbers at random. A1 to A5, in such a way that the sum is A. But otherwise, it's completely random. Like, for instance, you could, you could say choose uh, A1 up to A4 completely at random, and then, and then engineer A5 so that the sum is the right thing, for instance. Okay? Uh, and again, I'm lying a little bit here. As Claudio also lied, I'm just doing integer sums here. You, you really want to do sums modulo, some, some fixed constant, but never mind. Technicality. So now the idea is that you're going to take each of these numbers and send them privately to each of the other persons, which is easy enough, just use a secure line. Um, you also send the numbers to yourself, just to keep notation easier here. Okay. So we all do this. So that means that now we have uh, you know, uh, the receivers out, out, out the row there. So the first person sends this stuff out to the five people. The next person does the same thing. And everybody does the same thing here. Okay. So now that means that, OK, and remember that, that all these things, the rows sum to the right salaries. Okay? And so now um, it's important to say we didn't reveal any salaries here, right? Because, because this, this guy out here, you know, uh, of course, has received A5, for instance, and B5, and C5, and D5. Those are just random numbers. And in fact, even if you were told all these summands except for one in a row, you wouldn't learn the salary. Right? Because, because you, that there's one sum end you're missing. And from, from your point of view, that sum end could be absolutely anything. So that means if, if uh, and, and, and a fixed number plus an arbitrary integer can, can get, give you an arbitrary result. So there's no information there at all. OK, so, so now everybody has received uh, some column of numbers. And now we're going to tell these people to simply just add up the numbers you got and publish the sum. Okay, so you add up the column, and all these column sums just become public, sent to everyone. Okay, uh, and now I claim now we can get the result easily. And why is that? Well, just because the, the, the result is just that we just add up the, the, those column sums, and we get the sum of the salaries. Why is that? That's simply because, because if you think about it, uh, the rows sum to the salaries, right? So if I sum up the salaries, I've effectively summed up all numbers in that table. What we just did was we just summed them in a different way. We summed the columns first, and then we summed the column sums. Of course, the sum is the same, right? So, so, so we, get the, we get the right result here. Uh, but the point is we managed to do this without revealing the single salaries. Everybody learned the sum, but, but otherwise just random numbers. So that's, that's, that's very nice. Um, and in particular, so this is an example of secrets here, this random number in, in, in the row thing. Uh, you, you, you take some data, you split the data in, into pieces and shares, you give one to each party, and the point is that, that uh, this sharing has this property, if you don't have enough shares, in the example, if you, if you, have, if you don't have all numbers in a row, you'll learn nothing, 
Uh, if you have enough, you can reconstruct the secret. If you have all the numbers in a row, you can just sum up and get the secret. Uh, this generalizes using other techniques, which I don't have time to talk about. You can split to any number of shares, and you can set any threshold, saying that if you have this, much, these, this many shares, no matter who, who, who they are, you can, you can get the secret. If you have too few shares, you learn absolutely nothing. So this is a very general uh, primitive. Uh, and this, what you saw is a typical pattern of, of, of any secure computation protocol. You start by secret sharing the input data, not necessarily just some ants, but more advanced things probably. You compute on the shares you receive, and then in the end you have shares of the output, and then you reconstruct. That was this, this, this making the column sums public and then, then adding up those. Um, so that's, that's, that's a typical way it always goes. It's just that sometimes the actual technical content of those three steps is, is, is technically much more involved than, than what you just saw. But it, it's the same idea. Um, so I, we only did, did addition here. If you, want, if you want to do multiplication, it's more complicated. You have to interact. It's not enough just to send out shares, compute locally, send back. You need more interaction. But apart from that, it works the same way. Um, it's not always secret sharing. There's, always a way, there's also a way to do, to do encryption and, 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 and uh, things called homomorphic encryption that, that you might have heard about can also be used for this. Okay. So uh, in general, what we know is basically any function you can compute, you can also compute securely, is what we know. Not necessarily always uh, very, very efficiently, but, but, but it can be done in principle. In particular, as long as a minority of the parties are malicious, we can always get the right result out, and there's no side information that leaks. This is a general result. You take any, any, any number of parties, as long as the majority of these people do what they're supposed to do, then no, no minority can, can, can force us to do something incorrect, and they won't learn anything that they shouldn't learn, no matter what they do, basically. Uh, if you have a majority of parties that are malicious, in fact, you get the same guarantees. The only thing you cannot guarantee is that, is that you get the output. So if it's a majority of people working against us, they can stop the system. There's no way around this, right? I mean, it, 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 it's, it's simple to see. I mean, if you have two parties, like me and Claudio, and, and Claudio just stops playing and says, I don't want to talk to you, then, of course, we, we, we can't complete anything. You know, there, there's no way around that. So, it's kind of the best possible guarantees in that way. So, yeah, okay, I have a little bit of time. So where are we now? So, so it, it's interesting to see all this started back in the late 80s. It's many years ago. Um, and there, we, the, the, these results on the previous slide were actually shown in, in, in theory that this is possible. But if you, ask, if you asked me back then, I would have said, and everybody else would have said, yeah, this is, this is very nice theory. It's never going to fly in practice. It's way too inefficient. No way it's going to work. Uh, but this, of course, all changed over the years. Um, in particular, uh, there was a particular point in the 2000s where things changed very, very rapidly. There was kind of a revolution in these ideas. And we saw improvement of three to four orders of magnitude. And that's, that's you know, I mean, we're talking uh, 10,000 times faster and stuff like this. So this is really significant. Um, in fact, in 2008, we, we did in Denmark the first industrial application of MPC, of secure computation, uh, which actually led to Patricia being formed. Uh, and then, uh, as of now, well, medium-sized real-life application, for a very, of course, fluffy definition of what that means, can be done efficiently. Really big data we can't do yet. If we really want to you know, uh, do like, like Google-sized things, that's not something we can do yet. But, but, but we can do useful things, for sure. And it's usually not actually the computation that's the bottleneck, it's the network that's the bottleneck. Okay, so there's all kinds of uh, companies out there that are doing this sort of thing. And there are things like the NPC Alliance, the Computational Computing Consortium. Uh, so there's a lot, of, there's a lot of, of attention out there for, for this thing and people understanding more and more uh, how they can do this, how they can use this in practice. Okay, um, so has MPC revolutionized our society? Well, not quite yet, and, and, and why is that? Well, because doing this in practice is not so easy after all. And the reason for this is, is that, um, so my example before, right, was the, the, these five people wanting to view the average of their salaries. It's, it's kind of, um, 
it, you could do this just by coming together in a room with, with, with five laptops and just doing a closed network, and that would be fine, right? But, but in real life, that's not, that's not how things work, right? I mean, we, we, we have um, uh, all kinds of different parties out there that, that show up with their data. Who says they show up at the same time? Uh, so if we have a bunch of people that want to do this computation by collaborating, do we have the data available? Uh, once we have run a, a, a bit of the protocol, are we actually done? Uh, if we publish the output now, is that premature? Are we publishing too much? Uh, so there's all kinds of coordination issues that you need to solve here. Uh, so system level engineering challenges, there, there's a whole bunch of these. So it's, it, it's harder than you think just because of that. Um, and also, data owners, the people who actually have private data who might want to do this, uh, well, they don't know what MPC is usually. Don't know how to do it. Uh, maybe they don't even understand what secure computation is. Uh, on the other hand, cryptography experts, well, they know how to do it, but they're not the data owners. So, so how do you bring these people together? And of course, blockchain can help you because exactly what blockchains are good at is coordination, right? So, so this, this can help solve these system level challenges that, that, that we have uh, with MPC. And in particular, this, this means that you can now do MPC as a service. You can actually have people uh, that have nodes on, on the chain. Uh, you can stake a certain amount to boost trust in your service. Uh, and this way, you can actually make a link between the people who have the data and the people who have expertise to do the computation. Yep. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Particia blockchain is one of these uh, services that actually as far as I know, it's the only blockchain that really was designed to do this for you. Um, so hopefully success and game changer. And what I think is that um, for individuals, for instance, this might lead to a totally new economy for private data. Who says you should give Google data, Google all your data? Uh, maybe there's, there's a better way to do ad services. Um, and for companies, maybe there is a new way to collaborate with even your competitors in a way that would be mutually beneficial. And there's many more opportunities for this than you, than you think. Yeah. So I think that's it. Yes, thanks.